Our planet is lucky enough to be home to many intelligent species. <laughs> and also humans. But while monkeys and dolphins get their rightful praise every other day, why don't we celebrate those animals that have literally carried our steadily increasing holiday weight for centuries? From a horse with impressive hair to a 5,000-year-old stallion, here are the 15 most incredible horse breeds in the world. <laughs> Number 15. Frisian Horse Not all horses have their own personal hairstylists, but then again, Frisian is not your typical horse. While most of them tend to be pretty well shaved, many Frisians can be identified by their long curly locks and graceful appearance. They're basically horsey supermodels. Think Fabio with hooves. <laughs> Frisians date back all the way to the year 1200 and have often been used in battles throughout history, which is a little unusual given the fact that they are famously calm and gentle animals for their size. Typically standing between 15 and 17 hands tall, these black-haired animals are so strong and reliable that during the Middle Ages, they were more than capable of carrying a knight in full armor. Ask any woman that's tried to carry a knight at the bachelorette party, and you'll know just how tough that is. These guys tend to be carrying some ridiculous weight and armor. Somewhere around the beginning of the 20th century, the Frisian was close to worldwide extinction, probably due to the number of needless deaths caused by having to carry around these overweight knights. Thankfully, their numbers managed to increase, and now we're blessed with these well-groomed horses all over the world. <sighs> if only horse supermodels were a thing. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all that will take five seconds to complete. Let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Number 14, Arabian Horse. Apparently, the oldest horses are also the most memorable. The Arabian horse is one of the most famous horses in the world, mostly because the art world just seems to adore them. From paintings to books to a series of movies that began with the classic 1979 family adventure, The Black Stallion, you just know the Arabian horse when you see it. The Arabian horse is the oldest pure breed of horse in the world with some estimating that they're around 5,000 years old. But while most horses have changed in some noticeable ways over the years, the Arabian seems to be pretty unchangeable throughout the centuries, maintaining its dished face and graceful carriage constantly. A trait that I myself share with the Arabian horse. Just kidding. I don't have a graceful carriage, but I'm trying. While the Arabian horse is beloved by equestrian aficionados all around the world, nobody really knows where they came from, as the Arabian name originates from the Arabian tribes that protected them centuries ago. So the Arabian horse is the horse equivalent of the Holy Grail, I guess. Number 13, Quarter Horse. Talk about false advertising. The quarter horse is actually a full horse. The whole body is there and everything. Actually, the quarter horse is one of the most popular breeds in America, probably because everybody wants to see how a horse operates with only a quarter of its body. but we know how that one turns out. Spoiler, it's a disappointment. The quarter horse dates all the way back to 1660s America, when Spanish horses and English horses crossed to create this unique breed. But if the horse is full-bodied, why is it called the quarter horse? Well, it doesn't dispense coins, so there are two of my guesses shot down. The answer is actually rooted in sporting history, as this breed of horse was typically used as a sprinter in races that were a quarter mile in length. As it turns out, these horses were so good at these races that they quickly became known as quarter horses. Less interesting than my guesses, but okay, I guess. Soon after the quarter horse was all but pushed out of the racing scene due to the arrival of the thoroughbred, though cowboys quickly adopted it as their horse of choice, there are now 20,000 quarter horses registered in Germany alone. Number 12, Thoroughbred. Often referred to as the ultimate racing horse, the thoroughbred is probably the most famous breed of sporting horse in the world. From Secretariat to Man o' War, it seems just about all of history's greatest racehorses come from a thoroughbred background. 
In 2008, a thoroughbred filly named Winning Brew hit a speed of 44 miles per hour at the Penn National Racecourse, setting a world record for the fastest race speed of a horse, beating Secretariat's record speed by 4 miles per hour. That puts this horse on track to be one of the fastest animals in the world. But they're also capable of something even more impressive, jumping. The thoroughbred also holds the record for the highest jump by a horse, set in 1949 by Wasso, a thoroughbred that managed to jump 2.47 meters over 8 feet. That means these horses are pretty unbelievable and capable of a lot more than other breeds. Despite their many successes, the thoroughbred is also known to be an extremely anxious breed and often scares easily. This makes it something of an anomaly in the horse world. Immensely capable, very nervous, well, I think we can all relate to that one. Number 11. Paint Horse there's probably no horse more eye-catching than the paint horse, a breed that very much lives up to its name. Okay, so it can't actually paint, and it's not blue or polka dot color, or, well, aesthetically creative, but still. There's something truly beautiful about a horse like this. Known for their multi-colored coat, the paint horse is actually a very close relative to the quarter horse and only came to be known as its own species because of regulatory red tape. In the 1940s, the American quarter horse was so popular that an organization was established to deal with this specific breed. But the American Quarter Horse Association, or AQHA for short, were strict with their rules and refused to allow horses with excessive white coloring to be registered as quarter horses, regardless of their lineage. Deemed to be crop-out horses, the paint horse was effectively cast out of any official horse events. Serious Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer vibes, eh? By the 1960s, the horse had become so popular amongst horse fans that the American Paint Stock Horse Association had been developed to support them. These calm, intelligent animals are now considered to be a favorite for beginner riders and are welcome to join in on all the reindeer games. Number 10. Appaloosa most Americans are sadly unaware that there is such a thing as a state horse, one breed of horse that is considered to represent their home state. North Carolina has the colonial Spanish Mustang, Florida has the Florida Cracker Horse, and New Jersey has the horse, just generally, apparently. Idaho, however, has the most famous state horse of all, Appaloosa. No, I've never had a problem with them. The as I say, they're kind of a. The Appaloosa is a beautiful horse, famous for its colorful coat and very athletic build, which makes it perfect for just about everything, really. From racing to working cattle, Appaloosas are used for purposes across the board, one of the few horses to be multi-talented. But for Idaho, the horse is an important part of the state's history. In the early 20th century, the US government began seizing the land of tribes and relocating their people to reservations, leaving their horses to either be relocated with them or slaughtered. Years later, in 1937, Dr. Francis Haynes wrote an article about the Appaloosa, reawakening public interest in the horse and prompting the founding of the Appaloosa Horse Club in Idaho the following year. Hence, Idaho is the home of the Appaloosa. It's very rare for any breed of animal to be used for just about every imaginable purpose. But the Appaloosa is not just any horse, it's Idaho's horse. Number 9. Miniature Horse Before any of you start, a miniature horse is not a pony or a donkey, and I demand you keep your thoughts to yourself. These are beautiful and fascinating creatures with a long history from nobility pets to horse shows. But arguably, the most famous miniature horse would be Ponzi's Little Sebastian, and he was not a pony. Anybody that says otherwise can, well, go away. Sometime in the 1600s, the miniature horse was developed through selective breeding, giving it the unusual size for which it is now known. However, this bizarre trademark is exactly what made the animal so popular amongst royalty and nobility, many of whom took the miniature horse as a pet. In the 19th century, the wife of Napoleon, Empress Eugene, actually used her miniature horse to play small carriage. So just another example of rich people being, well, you know. In order to be classified as 
miniature, the horse must be shorter than three feet tall, a rule strictly imposed by the American Miniature Horse Association. And they take it seriously. The smallest mini horse in the world is Thumbelina, a world record holder that measures just 17.5 inches. People have TVs bigger than that. Number eight, and illusion. It seems every country on the planet has its own special type of horse. But the Spanish have perhaps one of the most spectacular. In Spain, residents refer to their horse as the pure Spanish horse, owing to its breeding in their home country. Much like the Alhambra and Antonio Banderas, the Andalusian is a beloved Spanish icon. Unlike Antonio Banderas, the Andalusian would make a terrible Zorro. You put a mask on a horse, it just looks like a horse in a mask. Long ago, the Andalusian was bred to be used as a cavalry horse, capable of being ridden by extremely heavy soldiers, while still being extremely agile. While not being used in battle, the Andalusians were presented as gifts to the elite, who particularly appreciated the breed's beautiful, expressive eyes, a trait that has made the horse hugely popular amongst artists who find something truly moving inside that can only be captured through art. But again, don't put a mask on the horse. It's weird. Today, the Andalusian is most often used in dressage displays during equestrian eventing, as well as in many movies and television shows. After all, when the horse has such gorgeous eyes, it's no surprise that audiences love to see it. Not as Zorro, I can't stress that enough. Number 7. Belgian Draft when most people hear the words Belgian draft, they often tend to think it's some kind of delicious, refreshing beer. Well, good luck trying to drink this thing. The Belgian draft is one of the biggest and most powerful horses on our planet. Although, to be fair, most people would have to drink their body weight in Belgian beer just to build the confidence to ride the thing. Typically measuring around 16 to 17 hands tall, the Belgian draft can weigh up to 2,200 pounds. While that may not be the heaviest horse in the world, it's definitely far from the lightest, likely because of their ancestors. The Belgian draft is a direct descendant of battle horses used in medieval times, often for jousting or general battle. That kind of job required strong muscles and versatility, making the draft the perfect horse for the job. But, of course, don't get thinking that these horses are scary or aggressive. Despite being pretty intimidating in their size and weight, these horses are considered to be one of the most docile, patient, and gentle breeds on the planet. So, a battle-hardened horse with patience and gentle nature? Horsey Forrest Gump! I have hundreds of these! Number 6. Shetland Pony When it comes to children, it's obviously irresponsible to just put children on top of full-grown horses, and after the age of 21, they get bored of merry-go-rounds. So what's the solution for all you exhausted parents? The Shetland Pony. This tiny breed is one of the most beloved all over the world, owing to its practicality for children. Also, it's tiny and adorable. The Shetland originates in Scotland, where they were often used as pack horses and would be frequently used in the English coal mines in the 1800s, sometime after it apparently became illegal to send women and children to work down there. Around this time, the species was transported to the United States, and kids were finally allowed to climb on board a horse. The Shetland is actually the smallest breed of horse in the world, outside of some dwarf ponies, with an average height of around 40 inches, making them perfect for young children to ride. But don't go thinking that the Shetland Pony is a novelty breed. During the UK's most popular horse race, the Grand National, a second specialty race, allows child jockeys to compete using Shetland Ponies. And someday, they will give me a shot. Number 5. Gypsy Vanner we should get this out of the way before the equestrian experts among us begin pointing it out. This is a horse of many names. Janet, Geoff, Gerhard… Okay, maybe not those specific names, but the Gypsy Vanner is also known as the Irish Cobb, the Gypsy Cobb, or just the Gypsy, making it pretty hard to keep up with who's who. 
Long ago, the Gypsy Vanner was developed by the Romani people of the United Kingdom to pull their Vardos. For those of you that have never heard of a Vardo, it was basically a wagon that the so-called Gypsies would live and work in, making the Gypsy Vanner a kind of chariot puller. And man, do they look pretty. With their feathered legs and powerful bodies, it's easy to assume that the Gypsy Vanner would be a tough horse to keep happy. But actually, these horses are incredibly gentle and sweet, making them perfect for children to ride. While the term gypsy has understandably become a word to avoid, the Gypsy Vanner remains a beloved breed of horse for equine experts and aspiring jockeys. Well, if you know what to call them, which nobody seems to. Number 4. Clydesdale Chances are that even if you don't know a whole lot about horses, you know about the Clydesdale. Known all across the United States as that horse from the Budweiser Super Bowl commercials, the Clydesdale is a big horse that's both beautiful and honestly pretty intimidating. In the mid-18th century, a man known as Patterson of Lachlan began to breed these powerful, impressive horses in Clydesdale, Scotland. When the horses were shown at a horse fair in Glasgow in 1826, they were finally named after their birthplace, and the rest is history. And actually, the Clydesdale almost was history at one point. Shortly after World War I, the whole Clydesdale breed almost went extinct due to war drafts and agricultural changes. Luckily, Clydesdales are strong horses, physically and mentally, and have managed to beat extinction, even if they're still considered to be a vulnerable species. If you're still uncertain about whether or not Clydesdales are truly incredible, let us leave you with this fact. A single Clydesdale is capable of pulling around 4,000 pounds, all on its own. How much do you bench again? Number 3. Standard Bread Sure, the name doesn't sound all that incredible, but the standard bread is something much more than a standard horse. Sure, it can't talk, or prepare a meal, or drive a car, or do anything that the cartoon horses can do, but they're still pretty impressive animals in their own right. Given the sheer quantity of infections and other life-threatening conditions of the period, it's not surprising that one of the most popular pastimes of the 17th century was something as innocent as a trotting race, also known as harness racing. Actually, pretty much anything that doesn't involve open contact with sewage or open wounds was popular. But these kinds of games required a special kind of horse, capable of effortlessly trotting or pacing at a suitable speed, leading to the development of the standard bread. So in a way, the standard bread was kind of the original Usain Bolt of the animal world. Nowadays, the standard bread can be seen in just about every kind of equestrian activity across the United States. So it's the animal Usain Bolt if Usain Bolt decided to expand his athletic horizons, I guess. Number 2. Paso Fino With a name like Paso Fino, it should come as no surprise that this Latin American breed is wildly considered to be one of the most beautiful horses in the world. Seriously, you might want to get a pen and paper for this one, because a horse is about to teach you just how to be beautiful. While most horse breeds tend to be bred specifically for racing purposes, the Paso Fino was actually bred to work on local plantations in Latin America. However, I don't think anybody expected the horse to look so darn elegant. With its natural gait and almost perfect posture, this is a horse that seems to look great no matter what angle you get it at. Seriously, look at any photo of the Paso Fino, and you'll find a masterclass in how to find your light and look great. Do what the Paso does, and your Instagram followers will thank you. The Paso Fino is primarily used in trail riding circumstances, though their versatility allows the breed to be used in just about all purposes, from horse shows to endurance contests. Mostly, though, they're masters of the photograph. Number 1. Halflinger the Golden Horse with the Golden Heart. It's such a beautiful slogan that you could easily assume that this was a marketing creation designed to sell the Halflinger to the general public. But actually, this is just a marketing creation designed to sell. Okay, it is good marketing, but it's also true. The Halflinger is an adorable little horse, and boy, is it mighty. 
While we can't be totally certain where the Haflinger actually came from, there is reason to believe that this breed was the result of crossbreeding between an Arabian stallion and an Australian mountain pony, giving it its unique and very memorable appearance. Today, the Haflinger is used for many uses, from harness work to dressage purposes, and even in wartime scenarios within the Australian and German armies. This kind of versatility is another reason why this frankly adorable horse is still immensely popular the world over. And if you need a little weirdness to balance things out, the Haflinger is known to produce over half of the horse milk consumed in Germany. Well, I promised you weirdness, but if you are really not into horse milk, then the Haflinger is most noteworthy for its charming temperament and sweet nature. Would you like to take a ride on any of these horses? And which do you think is most impressive? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.